Good morning, boys. This morning. You see, my name's Nicky Naylor. I'm Nicky Naylor. And basically, Naylor. to make the horns and tenon and tape them and place it on here. Now we get the hydrochloric acid. Ah, Liverpool Institute. Last time I was here, uh, I was little. I was sort of down here, and it all looked much bigger. All these things were up, all these uh, people who went to Oxford, all the lists and all that. Over here, this was the hall. This was where the secretaries and all those people were in the mornings. So I think the last time I sort of remember, it was like... Uh, all millions of kids all buzzing around and prefects and masters in gowns and things. This was the bit where you used to enter only if you were like very important, a prefect or something like that. Otherwise, you had to come in round the side. So that's where the hall is with the famous school motto. Non nobis solum said toti mundo nati. Not for ourselves, but for the whole world where we born. This is where they used to have all the notice boards here. So you'd, you'd, if you had, like, if you were in the Geographical Society or the Nature Society or all that, they'd put all the notices up there, so you'd come around here in the morning and see if there's anything interesting. Downstairs is where you used to go to eat. So when I was 11, uh, I came here in what they used to call the third form, because it had been a public school. They started kids at nine, I think, so 11-year-olds would have been in the third form. But that was when we started, very little and very innocent. Uh, I'm very overawed by this huge Victorian building that Charles Dickens once talked at. That used to be the science laboratory with like a big lecture, uh, big wooden lecture things going back. It's great. And in fact, that was where we used to have our bird watching. This is into the hall. So this is where I used to come in the mornings. I should go this way. This is playground. We used to come up here. This is from here, from the playground. Come in here. And that the, was the headmaster's office. Thank you, sir. He was called the Baz. And he was uh, quite friendly, actually. By the time I left the school, he seemed like quite a nice fellow. First, he was very overpowering and frightening. This was our first, cla this was our first classroom here. This one, 3C. Here we are. So this is the very first classroom I ever came to here. This was... 3C, this was Miss Inkley's class, and she taught Spanish, and uh, she would teach from up here. Now, boys, Miss Inkley. And she said, you can call me sir if you want, something I never quite worked out. Anyway, she used to have a lot of very thick makeup on, and they used to say that it was because she had uh, scars from the war. She'd been something in the war. So this is Miss Inkley, 3C. Quite some memories. Through the ruins, we pick our way. And this was into the, the hall for assembly. The organ's still here. I was wondering if it was. We go straight down here. There's a little bit of a dip now. And we are now on the famous stage that I don't think I've hardly ever been on. Such hallowed ground. The teachers used to come in from the back there, very dramatic. The headmaster and all that was here. And all us thousand boys were all seated, seated here. Um, first of all, we used to be up there, 3C. That was one of its places there. I remember reading these little books they used to give it called the Green Book, in which everybody's name from the school, they had everybody's name, so you could look up anyone. If you met someone, you sort of say his name is Davis or something, you could look him up and say, Davis, 3B, and it would tell you like any clubs he belonged to. She said, oh, it is interesting. It's very handy, like an early filofax, that was. I think it gave you a great feeling of the world was out there to be conquered, that the world was a very big place, and somehow you could reach it from here. Because I say, a lot of the kids, uh, went to Oxford and Cambridge and everywhere. It's all in a terrible state of repair now. We've got all little old drawers and stuff, beautifully made little pieces. It's a good drum. And uh, so this is it. We'd sit around here, and a teacher would sit at the end of the pew, you know, 
sort of keep the boys in line. And this was it, basically. Uh, my early life in Liverpool was spent, a lot of it, in this very place. From nine till four in the evening. Good morning, boys. This morning. This morning. This morning. There you go, then. Right, stage of the Institute, where I once performed in St. Joan by Bernard Shaw. I was one of the monks, and I had long hair, and I came on from this side, entered, and all the, all the guys who knew me sort of giggled, you know, because the long hair. I mean, he was probably shorter than this, really, but at the time, you know, it was, wow, scandalous. This is a point where we go down, so say in the mornings we were going after uh, assembly, I'm going to go to your first class, and say it was history, then I'd come down this corridor, and uh, to, to Cliff Edge's room, Mr. Edge, who taught history. He was a good lad. He was generally liked by people. And uh, so you'd have to find your way. And I mean, when you were 11, the very first sort of year I ever came here, it was difficult to just find your way around this place. You had to hang out with your mates and say, where are we going next, you know? And one of them might know where it was. So this is the, this is the place. I rem my main memory about this was, uh, this is exactly as it was. Um, but this was a place where we, we came at the end of term uh, one time, and we were allowed to bring our guitars in on the last day. So this was when we were here and we were established. You know, we weren't quite so young now, and we knew our way around. I remember me and George coming in here with the guitars. I think I stood on a desk and did tutti frutti. Oh! <laughs> Wouldn't hold me now. Oh, yes, it would. <laughs> And all the guys would be, ah, that's it, oh, all right, hot pool. See, oh, I don't know. This is it, and Cliff Edge would be up here. It is the, the desk where it used to be. That would be his old desk. It's the teacher's desk. And he was a tall fellow, and say, quite a nice fellow. He'd have his big, long black gown on. Be teaching history. I remember, I used to sit down there somewhere, than here at the front, I think so he could keep his eye on me. And I remember drawing a kind of glamorous lady on the cover of, uh, on the cover of my history book. Um, which didn't go down too well, except with the other boys, who then asked me if I could draw one on their books. So I became the class pornographer. Very early age, it was all harmless stuff, though, believe me up to the science laboratory, up on the top floor here, I think, where we used to have a teacher called Joe Schofield, Mr. Schofield, and uh, chemistry lecture room, yeah, here. And he once did this experiment where he, he blew up on him. Well, boys, here we are. Experiment here. Me and Jackson, my mate, used to sit here. In fact, maybe here. Because when, when his explosion happened over there, I said, I, I saw what he was doing. It looked a little bit funny. He said something about that. Now we get the hydrochloric acid. And he went and he picked up the sulfuric. He said, and we put it in. And I like, I said, hello, he's got the wrong one. Fix it. Ah! <coughs> Joe Sko, blown up. Off he went to hospital, but uh, it was just a few cuts, no problem. Now, this is where Nicky Naylor used to hold court. He was a little science teacher, a short man. We had a bit of a limp. And uh, we all used to work around here on these Bunsen burners and things like that. And uh, one day, the whole class was in here. You know, you'd have one boy there, one boy there, one boy there. We were all supposed to be working. And uh, Nicky Naylor left us with some job to do. And he said, get on with that, you know. Well, and he went out there. He went out. Uh, and. Uh, he said, now behave yourselves and all that. And I was, I used to mimic him. In fact, I still do. Because he used to walk around like, he said, he said, my name's Nicky Naylor. I'm Nicky Naylor. And I was going around the class doing this, you know, supposed to be working. And uh, in the middle of my act here, I'm going, I'm Nicky Naylor. My name's Nicky Naylor. And he walked in up there. He says, so is mine. Let's go and see the headmaster. Come on. And so that was me and him off to the baths. For me to be caned. No, I don't think I got caned for that one. But I have been caned. In the, used to cane you in the headmaster's office if you were really bad. 
It was mainly when I was in the younger years. Later, they didn't seem to do it so much. They cane you with a wooden bamboo thing across here. And the problem was if it got you here, because that used to leave wheels. That used to hurt. But um, one day, in fact, George Harrison, who used to go to this school too, uh, got caned. Because we did once or twice, you know, generally for just sort of messing around and talking in class, nothing deadly. But uh, George got uh, caned, and he, he went home, and he was uh, sitting at dinner and uh, having something to eat, and his dad noticed this wheel here, and he said, what was that? He said, oh, I got caned today, and dad got annoyed, you know. So the next day at school, um, the next day at school, the teacher who caned George was called out, and uh, Mr. Harrison, to see him. He said, are you the teacher that caned my son? He said, well, yes, I am. And smack! And he laid him out. George's dad laid him out. He's the hero of the entire school forever, to this very day. Here you've got all the, all the, the boards here, of the honours. What have we got? All sorts of things. Indian Police Commission. Assistant Keeper, Victorian Albert Museum. Scholar, classics. Classics. He used to give a really good education here, you know, so that the kids, this is going back to 1930, well, going back to 1901 and 02. The school bell used to be here somewhere, and you were always tempted to ring it. We weren't allowed to. This is Stan Reed's art class. And this is a great place. This was uh, <clears throat> where you could stay a bit late and do drawing and stuff. And I used to be interested in art, and I used to like Stan a lot, because he, uh, he was quite a sort of easygoing fella. And uh, the people, the council, Liverpool Council, sort of were involved in closing this school down. One of the fellows who was uh, big in the council was Derek Hatton. And when I met him, uh, he said, you don't remember me, do you? He said, uh, he said, you used to stay late in Stan Reed's art class, didn't you? Yeah, and I used to sit over here somewhere. And, uh, and you'd draw, you know, and do bits and pieces. He said, uh, he said well, when you, was, you used to stay late and do the art, he said, I was the little kid in detention. So this fellow who'd closed down this school was really just a little kid over here in the short pants in detention. And it's pretty hard to get detention off Stan Reed because he was quite an easygoing bloke, as I say. And this is the big staircase that goes down to, uh, down to the hall downstairs, if, you, uh, if you're going down. And I've, at one point, I had a, an art, uh, a piece of art, in, a, in a, a, what was it, in the art competition, the school art competition. And it used to sort of hang somewhere there. I was very proud of it. Of course, all the, the memories for me here uh, are not in this ruinous state. In fact, I'm not really seeing it like that. I, I'm kind of seeing it with, uh, you know, my art poster up here. Grime doesn't pay, I think it was. And uh, I'm seeing it with millions of kids just running up and down these stairs, you know, as if it's in the old days. This was the, uh, the secretary's office there, and there was a kind of youngish girl, you know, who was, I think, fancied by every boy in the whole school. You come right down, this is the dining room. And uh, down here was where everyone used to queue. Massive, big, long queue along here. And you'd queue up with your little dinner tickets, and the master would be standing right here, and you'd give him your dinner ticket. And he'd collect them in a great big wad of tickets. And you'd come in, and the queue sometimes used to wind round here. It was so long. And it'd double back here. And you'd go in that door, get your meal, and come out that door with you've been served in there. So we were along here, and this, this is now a big, a quite modern boiler uh, compared to what used to be. It used to be a sort of old iron stove there kind of thing. And one day, the teacher came in here, and um, he'd collected a great big wad of these dinner tickets that you used to pay, I don't know, a shilling for or something. And he got a great big wad of them, and he came in, and he used to put them on the fire here give him a little poke with a poker, then go back and collect another great big wad. And we were queuing here, so one day he came and he put them on the fire. But there was a very, there was a kind of wet coal on the fire, and it, it didn't burn up instantly. So what happened was all these dinner tickets were still in there, and we were standing here, 
This was money. This was banknotes. So uh, I must admit, we reached in and got pockets full of these. So, and then we went home and rubbed the ones that were in pencil off and resold them to our friends. Mind you, a lot of friends wouldn't do it because they said, you know, you know, I mean, they're going to notice secondhand tickets and everything. So it wasn't that good a scam after all. And this is where there was lots of tables and benches in here, a bit like sort of Oliver Twist. Uh, lots of, lots of uh, wooden tables and benches. And over here in, in this corner, I remember once I was eating over here, you'd bring your plates with your, your, your main dinner and your pudding. And I was coming over here, and I, there was a table here. And I sat down here and I was eating. And, you know, in the general way of things, I mean, I suppose I must have been shouting or something. I didn't mean to, generally. I might have been drumming on the table or something, but it wasn't really allowed. And the head boy came over. And I think he was a fellow called Holt. Blonde hair, rather sort of distinguished, and he had his gown on. He came over here, and he said, Oh, my God, you know, you stop all this sort of stuff. Come on now, behave yourself, really. Set an exam or so on. And I said, I was sitting here. I said, oh, well, sorry, you know, sorry. And so he comes back here, he says, he said, oh, you yeah, just, you know, stop messing around. Bang! And he turns into this smack. Bah! And he hits his head, and he's got to keep his composure. <whistles> Through the doors. I remember standing here once, some mate of mine, Evans, I think his name was. And he said, uh, he said, have you ever been butted? I said, no. He said, what's it like? He said, Boop! Like that, <laughs> he put me on the floor. Funny what you remember, really, isn't it? Bang. So this is the way to the woodwork room, where my memory is of the smell, mainly, which was fish glue. And uh, I enjoyed it in here, as you were shown how to use. I wasn't very good at it, I must admit, but you were shown how to use wood and stuff. And nowadays, uh, I enjoy all that. And basically, to make the mortise and tenon and take the wood and place it on here. With this little beauty here, you get it. <laughs> woodwork, it was really a sky of woodwork. It wasn't like a lesson. It was, uh, it was like playing, really. I mean, the main thing for me is it's just such a great building, all of this, you know, and it's, uh, it's great to have the opportunity, aged 11, to be coming round places like this. This was the music room. Where I basically never learned anything at all. I used to just sit over here, and the fellow would play sort of Beethoven records and that, and we'd wish he'd say something or tell us something about music or how to do it and stuff, but... He just played us stuff that we didn't really like. So I never learned anything about music. Next, down here, Dusty Durbin's English class. No, that's a science lecture, where I remember some woman came to do a lecture from there, from South Africa. And she gave a film show, and she was sort of rather sort of, you know, boys. And we said to her, but don't you think, you know, calling them boys and treating them like this is a bit uh, denigrating? She said, no, 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 you know, it's fine and all that. So even then, we were a little bit on South Africa's case. And I've come, in, I've come into the toilet, so uh, fancy a pee, anyone? This used to be Dusty Durbin's room. Mr. Alan Durbin, we used to call him Dusty Durbin, don't know why. And he used to have his stage area over there. He was the English teacher, and... Uh, I was quite interested in English literature because he got us interested very early on telling us about the dirty bits in English literature. And uh, we were kind of 16-year-old boys, so he, he got us interested. In that. And then we got interested in the other bits too, so he's quite a clever bloke. Um, he, he gave, at this stage, he, he used to have like six weeks to do an essay. And um, I'd never had that luxury before, ever. I'd always just had to do it in a few days. But having six weeks, of course, I didn't do it till the last two days or something. And the, the lecture was all about uh, American humor I was supposed to give. And uh, he called on me, said, OK, McCartney, you know, give us your lecture. So I started with a few little hastily put together notes. And I said, well, uh, you know, American humor is a 
funny, and uh, you know, there's a couple of names, and, and I said, and uh, I said about uh, Stephen Leacock and his one of his most famous books, The Bodily Head. And he said, wait a minute, McCartney. He said, you haven't done your homework, have you? He said, the Bodily Head was the name of the publishing house that did the book. I just looked at the cover, you know, Stephen Leacock, Bodily Head. Got it in. Still, he was all right, you know, he forgave me and that. He was a great fellow, actually. Uh, really, uh, one of the best teachers I ever had, this fellow. And uh, the funny thing is, he, he would tell you about a translation of something like Chaucer that was too hard to understand. Uh, and you could read the English translation kind of thing, you know. And um, I remember him telling me to do that, and I bought, bought a book that gave the translation. Well, now my, one of my daughters has just got a similar kind of book that does the same thing, gives a translation of Shakespeare. And lo and behold, it is by Alan Durband, the very man who was in this place. And what used to impress us about him, one of the things used to impress us about him, was that uh, he'd had a story uh, read out on the BBC, morning story, something that he'd written. So he was like a bit of a star, Dusty. I remember him asking me when I was sitting right there, I remember him asking up here, what are you going to do, McCartney, when you leave school? And I said, uh, I'm going to be in a group, sir. And he said, well, uh, pretty precarious business, you know. I said, yes, sir, but we've been offered 15 pounds a week. Spent my early life in Liverpool Something I'm not likely to forget No, 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 people blend with places On faces that I know but never met mm -hmm. Upstairs on the bus sits a man Talking to himself, or so it seems. Listing names of old comedians and laughing at them. Down the pier at where the speakers meet, each of them his own imagined crowd. Us his version of the book God has written. I spent my early life in Liverpool, something I'm not likely to regret. No, 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 people blend with places, the faces that I know. Never met in the street before they built the road, raising jam jars for a worthy cause or two. Prince the dog with one eye to his name wants to follow. Spent my early life in Liverpool Something I'm not likely to forget People blend with faces And places that I know Never met People blend with places And faces that I know But never met Walking with the boys of Dungeon Lane Aimlessly towards the cast iron shore Swapping tales about the Chinese farm Getting caught Swap 
spin tales about the Chinese farm Getting caught Down the sports field of the Institute Lips of safe the harmless village fool Reach the kids who pass the other side Saying hello, children. I spent my life in Liverpool. Something I'm not likely to forget. Oh, oh, oh. 